<clears throat> All right, this is number 22 on page 333. We've got a non-homogeneous system of differential equations given to us by this equation. We're going to remember to solve this one. We're going to solve the associated homogeneous system and then find the particular solution by uh, using variation of parameters. In this case, our A matrix is 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and we want to do again the determinant of A minus lambda I to find the characteristic polynomial so that we can find the eigenvalues. So we'll go switch over to GeoGebra, have that do it for us. I'm going to be a little bit lazy, and instead of going through all of the stuff with the spreadsheet, I'm just going to type it in directly. The matrix again was uh, 1. Was the first component in the upper left hand corner, so I have a 1 minus x, negative 1 was the first row, and then we'll have a 1, 1 minus x in the second row. I want the determinant of this matrix, and this is going to give us some complex roots. So if I look at the C solve command, we uh, want to set number 2 equal to 0. Get 1 plus i and 1 minus i is our eigenvalues. So we'll go back over here and write this real quick. We have x squared minus 2, or excuse me, lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 2. So our lambda is 1 plus or minus i. Remember in this case we can just find the eigenvector associated with one of the complex eigenvalues and then um, peel off the real and imaginary parts to give us the two that we need for our solution. So going back over to GeoGebra, I want to substitute substitute n to b, I want to change the x to 1 plus i and row reduce. So our eigenvector in this case will be i1. So our for lambda is 1 plus i, we get our k is i1. And then we split that into real and imaginary parts. The real part is 0, 1, and the imaginary part is 1, 0. So now we can use this to write our complementary solution. Will be c1 times, remember we take the b1 and the b2 multiplying by the cosine and the sine respectively and then flip it for the second one. Make sure we have that change in sign in the middle for the first one. So this is going to be 0, 1 cosine of t minus 1, 0 sine of t. That'll be multiplied by e to the t because remember it's e to the alpha t. Here's my alpha. And then the other one will be c2. Uh, we flip-flopped 1, 0 cosine of t plus 0, 1 sine of t e to the t. Now the individual parts here form our fundamental set, so we want to make our fundamental matrix from the fundamental set that we have. So in this case I would go across my first component and get the first component in the first column of the matrix, go through my second component, that'll give me the second component in the first column of my matrix. So to that end we get a minus e to the t sine t and a cosine T, e to the T. Um, I'm going to write the E to the T in front here. Let's make it look a little bit better. In the second one, we get a cosine of T times, or times an E to the T. And in the second one, we get an E to the T sine T. All right, so here's our fundamental matrix. We want to invert it, multiply it by the forcing function vector, which remember in this case was the 3, 3 times e to the t, integrate and multiply by phi. We're going to do all of that over in GeoGebra. So let me flip back over to GeoGebra. Our fundamental matrix was negative e to the t cosine t comma e to the no, it was negative e to the t sine t, wasn't it? Uh, to the t sine of t comma cosine of t uh, e to the t cosine of t I'll double check and make sure I'm getting this in right the other one was 
e to the t cosine t and e to the t sine of t. I believe that's correct, but let's just double check before we actually start doing any work. I see negative e to the t sine t, I see e to the t cosine t, I see e to the t cosine t, and e to the t sine t. Okay, good. All right, our forcing function vector was 3e to the t and 3e to the t. I want to take number 6, that's our fundamental matrix, I want to invert it, and I want to multiply it by number 7. It's, uh, I forgot I put it in as a single row. Sorry about that. Let me delete uh, row 7 and row 8 out here. Okay. Stop it. While you're doing that, delete. Okay. 3e to the t, and I forgot to put it as two separate components was my biggest problem. Come on. 3e to the t, and now I want to do number 6 inverse times number 7. Uh, let's see if this will simplify it at all. Nope, it didn't do really much of any good. Uh, the best it would have done is something with a secant squared in it. Um, it's messy, but I think GeoGebra can handle it. We want to integrate these things, so let's see if we can get in here, um, into the components, type an integral for the first one, and type an integral for the second one. There's our integrals. I want to get in here and delete the C1 and the C2. Really don't want those in there. And I want to multiply this by number six because that was our fundamental matrix. And let's see if we can simplify this at all. There. So this turned out to be not so bad. Here is our particular solution. So we can go back over to um, go back over to. So I can just copy. What are the chances I can copy it over so I don't have to keep flipping back and forth? Oh, I can, but it looks ugly. So I don't want to, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Delete that out. All right. Um, well, let me copy it as a... Yeah, well, let me copy it as a picture. That's fine. So we'll just rewrite it. So um, we'll have our x of p of t is... Let's just have to keep switching. Negative 3 e to the t cosine t uh, minus 3 e to the t sine t plus minus 3 e to the t and something that looks similar in the denominator or the denominator. The second component 3 e to the t cosine t minus 3 e to the t sine t uh, plus 3 e to the t. And then again, just as a reminder, I'm not going to rewrite the whole thing, but to find your final solution then, you take your complementary solution, which we found earlier, and add it to the particular solution. So that gives you an example of how to do uh, variation of parameters for a non-homogeneous system.